Good morning, everyone. I'm going to talk to you today about a relatively young project we have in a relatively young part of South Australia, the Delamarian origin. So prior to the commencement of this project last year, uh, the Geological Survey of South Australia had not been particularly active in the Delamarian area for a number of years. But our recent association with the MINAC CRC and National Drilling Initiative has enabled us to re-enter uh, and really springboard back into this undercover and greenfields area. Our aim with the project is to update and improve the geological framework and understanding of the region. The aim of enabling explorers to more efficiently and effectively explore and discover in this greenfields area. So our association with uh, MINEX CRC has really enabled us to be party to the development and pull through of drilling technologies associated with conventional drilling, as well as, of course, the coil tubing rig picked here, pictured here, but has also enabled us to tap into a vast amount of geoscience research and knowledge associated with the academic institutions party to MINEX CRC. So our phase one of the Delamarian project within the Geological Survey of South Australia was really a data release and compilation exercise uh, and an update of baseline geoscience data sets. This was released in a, in a stock take atlas of geoscience data, uh, which we put out at the start of September this year, uh, which accompanied a vast amount of tenement acreage release as we honed in on our, on our areas where we'll focus drilling and future research. So some of the types of data which we put out at this point were a vastly detailed uh, report on relogging and, and describing of existing legacy drill holes, uh, scanning of, in, of key drill holes uh, over key mineral deposits existing in the area, namely Sherlock and Alabama, uh, modeling of the Auslamp MT data set over the the broader Delamarian origin as it extends into New South Wales and Victoria, as well as some key work going on into understanding the cover thickness to the Delamarian basement beneath the Murray Basin. So that was using uh, both drill hole as well as magnetic source estimate uh, data sets. And accompanying all of this was a huge amount of work going on in the database team of the Geological Survey of South Australia uh, in updating the legacy data availability. Uh, so that was uh, getting uh, drill holes, lithology logs, geochemistry, as well as surface samples out of, uh, out of envelopes uh, and freely available through SA Geodata and SARIC. So broadly, the aims of our, of our project within the Delamarin is to understand how the continental margin, as it was, uh, spanning from the Proterozoic into the Phanerozoic, uh, at the eastern margin of, of Australia, how did that evolve? And where did different parts of this geosystem sit at different times uh, relating to subduction or possible subduction systems? Uh, that has a key impact on the mineral potential and what, uh, what deposit styles we might expect to find in the area. So as we went through phase one in our data release and compilation exercise, we put out a, a revised and improved uh, basement geological interpretation of the area. And as we moved towards drilling, we, we really worked on well, where could we best improve this map. And the two areas we came, came up with were an area in the north, uh, along the northern flanks of the Murray Basin uh, and the continuation across from New South Wales of the Lot Lily Cars Belt. Uh, this is south of Alabama and then south of the Nacker Arc, but also an area in the, the southern or central parts of the, of the Murray Basin, where there are really very limited constraints on what the, what the basement geology actually is. So as we move towards drilling, uh, we need to come up with a bit of a plan as to, as to how to attack this project. And we wanted to, really uh, go along with the spirit of the, of the MINEX CRC and pull through the, the coil tubing rig technology and associated tools. So we, we're gonna be drilling with the, with the CT rig uh, next year at some point between about May and August, depending on, on scheduling and, and rig availability and fitting in with other surveys having programs as well. Uh, we're gonna have a fixed number of holes in the, in the southern drilling area and hopefully more flexibility in the north. 
we wanted to stick to where basement is less than 350 meters depth, uh, noting that we'll be using the CT rig with a maximum capacity of 500 meters at this stage. And we'll be retrieving chips from the surface through to a decent way into fresh basement. And then hopefully we'll be able to retrieve a core sample of a meter or so, or potentially more. Also, we needed to come up with a bit of a strategy as to how we, we, we could uh, really get the amount of information we needed to out of this drilling program. And there's a real trade-off there between uh, targeting multiple holes into individual features and covering a large region. So we came up with the idea of using transects uh, with the hope of intersecting features uh, multiple times along a strike. So multiple transects within a, within a given region uh, and hopefully retrieving the desired amount of information that way. So our northern drilling area, termed Kwandong Vale, we've planned as 20 or so drill holes up in this region with the aim of intersecting as many different lithologies as possible in the continuation of what is termed the Lot Lily Cars Belt in New South Wales, which has porphyry as well as VMS potential. So we want to wanted to test the potential in South Australia for these deposit styles, as really as well as really understand what the uh, what the basement geology is in uh, in this really underexplored area of, of the northern Delamarian basement. Moving further south, the Alawuna area is our is our southern area. Uh, this is going to be targeted with a number of fixed drill hole locations. Uh, mapping across uh, north-south trending uh, belts that we can see in the in the total magnet magnetic intensity image here. Uh, some of the existing drill holes, which you can see marked out as the little black dots, uh, there aren't very many of them at all, but there's, there's potential lithologies which may indicate that some of these are magmatic arc segments, uh, but yet the, the geochemistry is really yet to confirm that, which is why we need to put some extra drill holes in here and really understand how this, how this section of, of uh, Delamarian basement evolved uh, and the mineral potential it may have. So we want to map the cover architecture across some of these structures as well uh, with some of this drilling and intersect as many possible sort of uh, volcanic and intrusive lithologies as well to try and understand whether this does represent uh, segments of volcanic arcs or not, uh, and the ages of these relative to uh, the known magmatic arcs in the Coonabri Belt in New South Wales, as well as the Stavery Belt in Victoria. So talking about the Stavely Belt in Victoria, uh, one of the possible deposit styles we might hope to understand a bit more about the potential in South Australia for, uh, and a good example is Thursday's Gossen, which is uh, a real focus area and there's, there's lots of hype and excitement about this deposit. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger the more they drill and seems to be a, a porphyry style system superimposed on a serpentinized peridotite. So the work that's been going on in, in Victoria uh, as well as partly uh, work going on from the uh, Geological Survey of Victoria and Geoscience Australia has really uh, understanding this area as, as dismembered arc segments in the, in the Stavely zone. And if we were to invoke some similar analogies, perhaps there's potential for similar deposit styles in, uh, in the Alawuna area. So hopefully what our drilling will, will shed some light on that. So really what we're talking about with our, with our drilling program, as well as uh, research going on as part of this project is understanding where the South Australian segment of the Delamarian origin is in terms of a, a, a stylized subduction setting and, and, and back arc setting. So we want to know where we are in this setting at any particular time. We want to know what crustal levels we're sat at. We want to know what the regional structure is. We want to know the ages of the ages of magmatism and whether that magmatism indicates we're, we're part of a back arc, we're part of a, of a magmatic arc, we're part of a fore arc. And we need to know this in, in both time and space as we go across the, across the Delamarian origin itself. So we can tell from, from uh, the, the Coonabri Belt in New South Wales and the 
stably zone in, in Victoria, that they're part of magmatic arcs. But we really need to know how these, how these link up. And obviously the answers are in South Australia. So some areas of current research going on within the Geological Survey of South Australia, as well as uh, with our association with, association with MENEX. Uh, we've been doing some work, which you'll hear more from, from Kate Robertson about just following my talk. Uh, using magnetotellurics to understand the architecture and potential for mineral pathways uh, through the lithosphere and crust. Uh, Stacey Curtis has been uh, doing a, a big project on the on Delamerian magnetism with ge geochronology and ge geochemistry uh, with the aim of understanding what some of these magmatic suites are and, and their fertility. Uh, students within the MINAC CRC such as Nana have been uh, working on the geochronology of the sort of more recent, uh, I guess, structural and exhumation of, of some of the Delamerian parts of the system. So using argon for this and, and understanding cooling ages there. We've got a program going on on province-wide detrital zircon geochronology, which will enable us to really understand for the first time whether we are looking at Cambrian uh, Cambrian basins through here, have we got any preserved remnants of, of older basins or, or even into the Neoproterozoic or older? Uh, and aligning with the uh, tribal zircon geochronology, uh, Liliana Storian has been doing some work on, on uh, biostratigraphy and has, has turned up a, uh, some really cool look, looking bugs. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a coronavirus, honest. Uh, which tend to indicate an early Cambrian age for some of the uh, really low-grade meta, uh, low grade metasedimentary rocks in the northern Gallimerian area, which is, which is quite exciting. That's uh, the first age on some of these rocks for, for a very long time. And that's starting to give us some insights as to, as to where we might be in this system. So moving on to potential collaboration and, and, and opportunities, we're, we're really excited that... Uh, Geoscience Australia has, has highlighted two corridors of interest for their exploring for the future. And we're obviously with the Delamerian origin, we're sat right in the middle of one of these corridors. Uh, so we're excited about what that might hold. We, we don't know yet, but uh, we're already in talks with New South Wales and Victoria about the cross-border geology and understanding the wider Delamerian system. So I think there's, there's a lot more scope for work in this area. And we're really excited about where this project is going and looking forward to the results of the drilling program next year. Thank you very much.